the best in poker news, entertainment, and more. This is the Mark Oak Show. Everybody, hi, how are we doing today? We are live once again here at the World Series of Poker. It is main event time and uh, a few casualties starting to pile up just a little bit. David Benefield, former uh, November Niner from last year, gone. We say goodbye to Mr. Benefield. I was very fortunate to be in that November Nine last year. Luck runs out today, so unfortunately for him, he is history and... Uh, November Niner bites the dust, and of course we'll go through the list and let you know who else is out of here, who's doing well. We have a couple other events finishing up. We'll take a look at those, so it should be a pretty interesting show. And uh, of course, break coming up here in 24 minutes and 30 seconds. They're live from the Rio, so we'll see who else is hanging around. But I got to tell you, that, like I said, the Brazilian room, a little light today. If you missed today's show, they were actually playing five-handed, six-handed. Had one table that was actually playing with two players at the table, which they weren't supposed to do, and that was not a good thing. But it's pretty goofy stuff happening here at the WSOP. But we're having some fun. Of course, uh, Chris Moneymaker interview uh, that should be up on YouTube. If it's not, it will be any second. So if you want to check that out, including, uh, well... Someone who obviously didn't know who Chris Moneymaker was interrupting us. That was pretty rough, uh, but uh, a pretty funny moment there. So make sure you check that out on our YouTube channel, Mark Oak. Easy to find. All right, uh, so I'm sure we'll see Joe Payne coming out here on his break along with many other players hanging out, having a good time here at the Rio. Of course, uh, we want to make sure we get a couple mentions in here before we get rolling and I want to take the time to see. I've got these lovely papers right in my hand. First, coming up tomorrow, if you're here in Las Vegas, the Charity Series of Poker, that's uh, headed up by Matt Stout, has a huge event at Planet Hollywood. 260 plus 40 with $100 rebuys and add-ons, cash only. 50% of the prize pool going to the payouts, 50% going to the Three Square Food Bank, which is Las Vegas' only food bank. Uh, it's part of Planet Hollywood's famous poker series in addition to cash top four receive a monster dna headphones and fifth through ninth get a monster mobile power card portable battery so if you want to get more information about this uh, it's at charity series of poker.org you can follow on twitter at the csop that's the csop and like i'm on facebook charity series of poker you know i may do that right now i think i'm gonna do that let's let's, let's go to the old twitter and we're gonna find at the CSOP, all right, at the CSOP, the Charity Series of Poker. If I'm not following it, I'm going to follow it from all of my accounts right now. You should too. Click, 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 and Matt Stout gets three followers for his great efforts. Speaking of that, Matt Stout's going to be there. Matt Salzberg, Chris Spears, of course, great tournament director will be over there. Chris Moneymaker, Annette Oberstad. Tom, Mar Tom Marchese, Tony Dunst, Michael Mizraki, Carlos Mortensen, Gavin Smith, Ryan Reese, Jay Farber, Lacey Jones, Lynn Gil Martin, Paul Wasica, Greg Merson, Will Faella, Matt Glantz, Mike Manisel, Michael Fahuja, Amanda Musumeci, Trishel Canatella, and Steve Gross all are going to be popping in over there. Wow, that is a that's a nice little group. <laughs> so if you're looking for a great event. My gosh, this is going to be a, a really good one. So make sure you check it out and get on over there to Planet Hollywood. And I'm going to give their Facebook page a like, too, because I'm that kind of guy. Let's give it a like. There we go. Done. All right. So. <laughs> wow. That's a happy dealer. My What's going on? Okay. 
I can't say I've seen a dealer jump this late in the World Series. That's amazing. All right, so there you go. That's the kind of stuff that happens to the WSOP. Uh, also, coming up, uh, the Mark Hoke Show is going to be on the road to Calgary. That's right. We are going to Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I can't wait. I'm going to get to say hi to the hitman, Bret Hart, and the family. Uh, but we are going to Grey Eagle Resort and Casino for the Canadian Poker Tours Summer Showdown $500,000 guarantee main event. Ten events over 11 days. That's going to be a great time up there. And, of course, uh, we'll be there covering the main event uh, starting on, looks like, August 1st. So if you want to join us for that, go to Canadian Poker Tour. Dot TV. Uh, it's CanadianPokerTour.tv. Get more information, and we will be thrilled to see you up at Gray Eagle Resort and Casino for the Summer Showdown. Part of the Canadian Poker Tour. Yeah. We're having some fun with that. Some in weird activity in the hallways. I think people are starting to finally flip out. I think it's over. <laughs> I think it's over. We, everyone has officially lost it. But, oh, well, what are you going to do? So, <laughs> and I got to tell you, one thing that has been popping up on Twitter and Facebook a lot has been these, the Doe.com stress relievers, otherwise known as these orange hockey pucks. Many people are putting together some uh, interesting tweets about this. Microstakes Hero said, can someone tell me uh, WTF these orange hockey pucks mean at the WSOPME? Um I guess we're just trying to advertise, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that, even though kind of interesting. Uh, we had Andy Block building a massive tower or some sort of structure of them, and apparently Justin Bono was going to be putting together a little rebellion with these and trying to get Jack Effel buried. So, all right. It looks like uh, gangs over at the Run Good Gear Lounge using the charger and not supposed to be. That's all right. We'll take care of that later. Let's take a look at what is going on at various events here at the World Series of Poker. And, of course, uh, hanging out at the Run Good Gear Lounge over there. Having a good old time. And let's take a look. Uh, let's pull up event... Get to event number 62, the little one-for-one one drop. Uh, that one is starting to wind down. We're down to 28 players in that. Of course, uh, the final table, everybody's going to be coming back for that one. It, right now, 28 left, and it is Jose Carlos Garcia. Uh, Jose Carlos Garcia at 995,000. Arpad Balaz from Adelbrunn, Germany, is in second to 970. Brandon Eisen, 945. Theodore Driscoll, 935. And Asi Moshi, look at this guy, trying to come up and win a second bracelet. He's at 860,000. Keanu Tabali at 730. And keep going down here. A Nobles, Maurice Hawkins, who made a nice run in the Millionaire Maker, is at 640. Uh, baseball to Eric Ballman, still at 630. So he is contending in this one as well. Uh, otherwise, uh, Kevin Eister's in there, still Brett Schaefer at least according to the, the big board, but the numbers don't quite match. So uh, Jose Carlos Garcia, who actually dropped on this last uh, last round, but is still 995,000. So best of luck to Jose and the rest of the group there as they try to wrap up the little one for one drop. Now let's slide down and take a look at event number 63. Of course, that one's over. Uh, we have that one in the Pot Limit Omaha, event number 64. And your leader is from Parts Unknown, Pat Walsh, with nine left. Uh, he's a 4.1 million and a nice lead on... Mil oh, my God. Miltiadis Kirakides. We'll go with that. Uh, from Nicosia, Cyprus. At 2.2 million, so a nice lead for Pat Walsh right now. Uh, Javid Abrahams at 1.7 million. Marco Newman 1.13. Isaac Barron in contention 870,000. Michael Mariska at 750. Michael Schlover 720. Matt Marafiati still in this thing at 596. And Jonas Enten at 530. Alex Krepchenko 
busting out in 10th. Tom Marchese out in 11th. Late Force in 13th. Matt Stout in 14th. So should be at, we are uh, down to nine in the pot limit Omaha. Event 64. And that means only, so only two events remaining as we continue to move on towards the main event. And let's pull up your information for the main event right now. And we'll see who's checking in here. Hey, Nick Devella, way to go. 100,000 chips reported. So Nick Devella off to a nice start here at the World Series of Poker. John Broderick, 99,000. Raymond Ezzy, 91.6. Louis Cohen, 85. Chad Power, 84. Uh, Damien Lemieux at, uh, I'm sure we'll learn that real pronunciation later, 74. Aaron Weld at 70. Shang Dai at 68. Ethiel Garcia reporting at 67.1. Uh, some of your bigger names. Let's see who's hanging around in here. Charles Silvestri at 57. Max Aldergott, 51. Mark Herm at 50. Corey Zyman, 49. Johnny Chan at 48. Justin Bonomo also listed at 48. So is David Singer. Billy Baxter at 46. Chris Moneymaker, a good start at 44. Uh, Mark Etienne McLaughlin. Guy who uh, had a legit chance to win that thing last year. Uh, comes in 43rd with 43,000. Antonio Spondiari has picked up some chips at 42,500. Abe Missouri had a great World Series. He is at 41,000. And many more, of course, still in there. Joe Payne at 38. Way to go, Joe. So we'll hear from Joe in a little while. Uh, listing 1,000 entries at this point uh, for today. Not necessarily sure, obviously, how accurate that is. But uh, that's what they're saying right now here at the WSOP. On uh, some of your updates, let's take a look at some recent happenings. Uh, Chad Bauer took a little bit of a hit, went down to 84 from Cliff Goldkind. So those two guys duking it out. They're both towards the top of the leaderboard. Uh, Craig Varnell went all in, and he manages to hold up and hand. You got Jamie Roberts at 59-4. And let's see. And unfortunately, two deep runs for this man, but it has been a rough World Series for him. And unfortunately, that continued. Stephen G., who made the final table two years ago and then was 24th last year, one of the great back-to-back -back runs in World Series main event history, has been eliminated, uh, raised to 900. Following a race to 900, G. moved all in from Button with the last 4,900. Opponent made the call. Uh, I'm assuming it was Ace Jack. Uh, opponent ace queen of hearts three five nine nine four and Stephen G has been eliminated so I'm sorry ninth this me ninth and 24th um, so um, Stephen G is out and I know he had a frustrating World Series and he is eliminated uh, somebody tried to bluff Johnny Chan that did not work out chip Johnny Chan up to 48,000 uh, John Manette at 60 right now. Lane Flack at 34.5. So he gets himself off to a nice start. And a couple of other bust outs. Sean Jazagiri is out, as is Alberto Sapiano. They have been eliminated. Uh, Chris Moneymaker lost some chips, but still at 46,000. Uh, let's see if we got any other interesting chip counts here. Uh, Kerry Katz losing a bit against Kings. And uh, once again, Nick DeVella cracking the 600, or the uh, six-figure number. He is over 100,000. Bill Perkins, by the way, doubles up with quads. How about this? Uh, player open to 600. Perkins makes it 16 from the cutoff. Uh, goes back, who original Razor pops it to 4,000. Perkins goes in for the last 979.50. Perkins with nines. His opponent had kings, but a nine on the turn saves Bill Perkins. And then a flop, oh yeah, flop 956. And then another nine on the turn gives Perkins the quads. And Bill Perkins gets himself off to a nice start, or saves his tournament there with quads. Very impressive job. All right, uh, Louis Cohen. Uh, 85,000, Chad Power 84. We're getting a few more chip counts coming in. And Bruno Fatuzzi, one of the guys that really stands out here at the World Series, 
He has been eliminated. Uh, just apparently from what everybody said, he had a just a rough day. And, of course, and uh, has been knocked out of here. So Bruno Fatusi, I mean, it just goes to show that even though you get a ton of chips in this place, it, it's very easy to get knocked out of this turn where things don't, you're not playing smart or things just go bad for you. It does happen. So uh, Fatusi is out in this one. So we will not be seeing Bruno Fatusi at the November 9. Let's we'll see if we got anything else for you here. As we take a look, and Ben Jackson in some trouble there. Kyle Ray in some trouble. Justin Bonomo loses a hand, but uh, still 48,000, so off to a nice start. You know, everybody's just kind of coming in here, and you hope you can double this thing up. Always the goal. Uh, and that looks like about where those updates are at the moment. So we do have a few players out of this thing at this point, and, of course, many more to come. But we'll see if we get the final number. I think it's going to be coming later in the break, so we'll probably be off the air. But we will see what happens with eliminations here at the World Series of Poker on day one. All right, and players are going to be on break in about nine minutes here. So we'll look forward to seeing these guys come out on their dinner break. I'm sure we'll get to talk to Joe. Very excited. He's got his name on the board. He has survived. He didn't blow it, which I didn't expect him to do. He's a he's a very good player, and I'm sure he's going to be looking pretty good. So let's see. Um, by the way, Kevin Mathers on the Twitter, the dope puck has as much nutritional value as those ruffle chips from ruffles chips from last year. So there you go. Very nice job. Um, looks like we have a player, by the way, Andrew Feldman from ESPN tweeting after his, uh, winning his seat into the main event online. Uh, R. Alvarado 06 is playing 1A and trying for one in 2015. So somebody's getting a little greedy out there taking, the, uh, taking up the seats. Uh, let's see. And Jason Mercier who had been kind of riding the edge here, uh, up and down. He has busted the main event, so Jason Mercier is out here at the World Series. Uh, Phil Homie letting everybody know he's uh, going into complete relaxation mode until he enters the main event Monday. Sunning by the pool, chill dinner with wife, long walk movie. Got the enjoyment time at the party with Phil last night. So that was pretty nice. So congratulations, uh, Phil. So we'll be seeing Phil Homemuth coming here uh, on Monday, apparently, as he'll be playing day 1C. All right, uh, let's step back and take a break, and we will uh, be having the players coming out for their breaks pretty soon here, so we'll see who can come out and hang out with us. And we'll step back and take a break here on the Mark Hoke Show. We want to thank you for joining us. We're live here at the World Series of Poker, so stick around, everybody. We will be right back. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code MarkHokeShow when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold, hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. 
And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with the promo code HOKE. That's H-O-K-E for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. .net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high-quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Poker players, it's time to check out DeejPoker.com. Deej Poker is the unique and clever choice for a new generation of true grinders. Representing the full spectrum of poker players from the novice to the world champion, a true Deej player gives their heart and soul for countless hours at the tables to be the best. And Deej Poker Apparel shows everyone who you really are on and off the felt. So join the new generation at DeejPoker.com. That's D-E-E-G Poker.com. Deej Poker, the world's newest poker apparel store. Sports bettors, tired of getting beat every week at your sports book? It's time to stop guessing and start winning. We all know cash is king, and it's time to let the team at Double Digit Covers come to the rescue to help you get the positive cash flow you need to live the life you've always dreamed about. Tony Dose and his all-star sports handicapping team will be in your corner to help you beat the point spread, bring excitement and winning to your betting experience, and build your bankroll to levels you never thought possible. Get free winning sports information at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Stop guessing and start winning today at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Call now for today's free winner. 1-855-489-2700. That's 1-855-489-2700. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, everybody, we are back here live. Let's see if poker didn't see you around. Hey, we uh, opened up the Skype line, so if you would like to give us a call, we would love to hear from you. And because I don't know how many people we're going to be hearing from. To be very frank, 
the Brazilian room, at least the side that I can see, is empty. I'm not sure what's going on on the side that's in front of me behind the wall, but I am looking back uh, through the uh, silver section and the green section. There's nobody there. They are they are out of here. So uh, things consolidating down here pretty quickly already here at the World Series of Poker. But, of course, it wouldn't have been too hard because a lot of these tables were six-handed, seven-handed. So they had to get this thing cleaned up pretty quickly because a lot of people were playing shorthanded poker and not very happy about it. So we'll find out how, you know, maybe even Joe gets out here, we'll see where everybody got shipped to. But uh, once again, that's very quiet in the Brazilian room. Uh, looks like the main event players are just starting to come on out as there are three, two, one, and that level is over. All right, so players are now on a one and a half hour dinner break. And uh, so, one of the one of the biggest sweats that you always have in a World Series of Poker event is making the dinner break, even if it's a, a couple day, a one day, a two day tournament. You know, making that dinner break's huge, and you know, of course, getting into the the seven day tournament. You know, you plunk ten thousand dollars down. You sure as heck want to make sure you stick around. Kind of important. So, so everybody that made the dinner break, way to go! You are halfway through day one. Nice job, bang. And so we'll see who shows up here on the dinner break as everybody is just starting to fill her out of their rooms at this point. And by the way, uh, I, you know, we always like to find the celebrities that uh, show up here. And right now we have a we have one in the house and one that I am very familiar with, Kirk Acevedo, who an actor, of course, who played Miguel Alvarez on the TV show Oz, one of my personal favorites on HBO, uh, also played uh, Joe Toy in Band of Brothers and uh, has also been in Thin Red Line and Dinner Rush. So that one I really, really didn't know. Uh, let's see some of the other ones he did. And, of course, he's got uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes coming up here soon. But uh, Kirk Acevedo is in the house. Uh, some of the TV stuff, let's see. Yeah, I did a little NYPD Blue 24. I mean, you know, he's been on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, Law and Order. Let's see what else we have. Yeah, uh, New York Undercover. Yeah, so Kirk Acevedo is in the house playing the World Series of Poker main event. So uh, we welcome Kirk Acevedo out here to the World Series. Um, I was going to go over the World Series of Poker Player of the Year race. I, of course, managed to completely misclick and get rid of it. Because that's what I do. I find tiny little ways to screw up every once in a while. So let's go and pull those up again. World Series of Poker Player of the Year standings. And there has been a change, ladies and gentlemen. George Danzer, who looked like for a while he was going to be running away with this. But Brandon Shaq Harris has said, uh, 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 not so fast, my friend. 752 points for Brandon Shaq Harris. He now leads George Danzer who's at 745.2, so only 6.8 points separating these two players at the top of the World Series of Poker leaderboard. Brandon Shaq Harris now holding on to a very, very slight edge here in the Player of the Year race. Steve Fox is here. Fox man. Mr. Foxy. Sly like a flox. Look at him go. Playing the main event. You want to say hi to everybody, Steve? Come on in and say hi. Hey, all right. Of course, you heard from her early in the World Series. Steve Fox here. What's up, buddy? Well, I took the plunge. I'm in the main event this year. I'm not currently right now. I'm playing tomorrow at noon. So was it like a nesty plunge or was it, uh, you know, <laughs> a, a jumping through a ring of fire? What's it like? Uh, more like the ring of fire. <laughs> <laughs> like setting fire to $10,000. Oh, that's going to hurt. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's what it says. I mean, if, uh, you got to be ready to set fire to $10,000 when you buy in. It uh, can't be your last ten grand. Well, it could be if you're not smart. Well, I'm not one of those guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't I, uh, think so. Uh, last I talked to you, I was going home. Went home, and I talked to my wife. I said, honey, I want to play in the main event. She goes, sure. 
Go for it. Why wow. not? <laughs> that's yeah, that's that's. I got an amazing wife. She's very supportive of my poker, and and uh, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for her and and a few other amazing women. Uh, I mentioned them last time I was on Marsha Wagner, uh, Linda Johnson, Jan Fisher. Um, yeah, they. Uh, I've got some amazing women in my life. I just run well in life generally, but. Uh, and this guy right here, he's another amazing person in my oh, life. Shuckles, thank you. Yeah. You're a sweetheart. Oh, yeah. Here, i got to get that five bucks out. <laughs> <laughs> so how's it going today? Uh, I just got into town yesterday. Um, I just got here at the Rio just probably about 15 minutes ago. Just kind of check it out and see what's going on. You moved to different digs. You're here at the, you're in the, the old hallway you were used to be. Yeah, um, yeah we're, everybody's vaping, apparently. The vaping was more important. <laughs> that vaping. The the vaping God, beats I, the most attractive booth at the uh, at the uh, World Series. F that. I'm I'm just I hate vaping. <laughs> I hate it. I I I I've, I have a feeling they're going to find out that vaping is going to be just as bad, if not worse, than actually smoking cigarettes. Wow. Maybe you're filling your lungs with fluid or something. I yeah, don't I don't know. I mean, and it's just not nothing. It's just not that they got nicotine in it too. If mm. I if I know my vaping, but I'm not on board with vaping. I'm not either, especially when it r- makes me move. <laughs> and no that, fun. too. And I moved my buddy Mark. Yeah, really sucked. But That yeah. was a pretty good little location. That was a pretty sweet little location. Yeah. Well, we're all right down here, too, once we get some people down here. Just today, surprisingly quiet. Maybe you should have hopped in today and uh, barreled through some people. Yeah, yeah I, boy, there was some – There, I was watching the reports, and there was just some really, really bad play. I mean, yeah. I, mean I don't mean any disrespect to some of the people they're reporting on, but, boy. I don't know what some of those people are thinking. Well, you know, everybody comes here with a 10K and a dream. Yeah. You know, and sometimes that, that dream really shouldn't have been dreamt. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, and, and some of these guys are, I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, I don't know what they're thinking. I just really don't. I mean. Oh, come mention one name. Come on, you can do it. I know you want to. Look at you. I know. I do. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing a bobblehead thing there. Yeah. You're like, oh, should I, well, shouldn't I? Yeah. You really want a name? Yeah, I want a name. I mean, and he's a main event winner, too. Chris Moneymaker. I mean. Yeah. I mean, who am I to second guess him? I'm just a Donkus Maximus. But, <laughs> but well, I mean, I'd look at all the bracelets I've got here. I mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to throw the rock at the glass yeah, house. I know, you know. I mean, but, you know. Some inter- there, there have been some very interesting hands going on, but you know, I think that's part of the, you know, and I'm sure you're preparing for this is getting in there tomorrow, and you know, it seems like tomorrow, I have a feeling is going to be a very amateur-y day, if you know what I mean. Just there's going to be a lot of amateurs in and there. And the secret there is not to get lucky; it's not to get unlucky. Right. And that's been made very, very plain to me by some of the aforementioned people I mentioned. And just, you know, keep your head down and play, you know, great poker and don't get unlucky. Yeah, I, w- I mean, you, you get 30000 in chips. And obviously, you know, and, and to be honest with you, you know, for the, for the most part, to get knocked out on the first day if you're a good player, you know, you're either going to get cooler or you just make just one a terrible mistake. Yeah. At some point, yeah, I mean, you know, and, and we've you know we've seen that, or you know, just getting too over aggressive. Well, I, I think, I I think it's somebody, the biggest one. I was in the cash area just before I came here, and somebody said they were at their table. Somebody was all in on the twelfth hand. Wow. I mean, and I I've been there actually. I've uh, in the Heartland Poker Tour. You get thirty k in chips. I was that guy. I was all in on the second hand of a, you know. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure you had a reason for that. Well, we I had history with the guy I was up against, and he could have been all in with any two cards, literally. I know I had a pair of kings, and not a dream hand to be all in on the second, you know. And we each had kings. It was a chop pot, so. Hmm. <laughs> That's scary, though. I mean, it no, was we, very scary. I mean, we remember one of the, the legendary hands of the World Series with Orlando Hudson and, and Sam Farha. Where they both hit the hit a full house. Oh and yeah, oh, yeah. Full my house. wife and I talk about oh. that all the time, all the time. I mean, poor guy. I mean, jeez. But I mean, if you want to, you have a cautionary tale about what can happen. I'll, the I'll never forget this look on Sam Farha's face. I mean, he's like, you know, I was like, really? <laughs> You're giving me these chips? And this is back when you only had ten thousand chips starting out. Too. Right. And yeah, uh, that's a legendary hand. Poor guy. 
and talk about setting fire to ten thousand dollars. <laughs> that had to be so horrible. Yeah, I, I mean, couldn't imagine taking that walk. One hand, ow. Yeah, boom. But, My wife and I, we when we talk to people who don't really understand poker, we mention that hand all the time, all the time. It's people, and they just like, like, oh wow, ten thousand dollars, boom, like that, and it's just like, oh, there you are. It can uh, happen. It yeah, can, I mean, how do you, you know, how do you get away from that hand? If you're Hudson, that's I mean that's oh, yeah. pretty that's Hud- pretty no. tough to get away from. Yeah, that thing. that's yeah, that's yeah. Oh, I, you're thinking I'm gold on that. Uh, yeah, I I don't know how you do it. It's like, uh, man, it's so sick, so so sick. And then giving him to that for Farha. Yeah. I mean that's the last. If I was at that table, I just would have been <laughs> him with 20, 20 k in chips. I Thank mean, you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Why couldn't you have done that to me? I mean. <laughs> Yeah, but he's the, not a guy you want to see with chips, especially in that tournament. No, definitely not. Yeah, and uh, we're don't you know what? Actually, let's see if we got any more updated chip counts while we're here. Bear with me for There's one some second. people with some really huge chip counts. I was noticing before I got here. Some I think chip leader they're showing has had like 86k, or that was oh they were, they're over that. Oh they are. Yeah, oh, we did yeah, get our okay. first guy over 100,000. Oh wow! Believe wow. it or not, boy, you got to be. You got to be running gold to get over oh, 100,000 this early in the hitting tournament. Sets, hitting straights. Oh, People let's make, shoving into you with sets. Let's make it even worse. Uh, Nick Devella was the guy over 100,000. He's now in 93.9. John Broderick, 140,075 chips. I would get up oh. and walk away from the frickin' table. After three levels. I would get. Away, I would just get up and walk away. Just say no. What's his first name? John. 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 Just, just say no. Just get up. John, go away. Oh, go away. Just you don't want to make any <laughs> bad decisions at this point. You're all good. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to make day two, John. Yeah, you're safe. You can probably make even day three with that stack. That's a possibility. That is a possibility. Yeah. But of course, see now. Now this is an interesting. Now let you know. Let's take a look at a guy like this right now, who's in this position. He's three levels in. He's got 140,000 chips, so he's nearly five up. You know, five times the starting chip yeah, stack. Yeah. And you know, the one cautionary tale here is don't get crazy with this. No. Well, I've, I've seen it happen, you know? too. I've seen it happen in uh, the preliminary events. I saw a guy. He had, you know, a, it was a 1,500 event, so it wasn't like 100 and some odd thousand, but it was like, you know, almost 50,000 at the dinner break. And by he didn't make day two. Wow. That's horrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really got to. You really got to. <laughs> just turn on the hurricane winds to blow yourself out the door on that. Oh, one. he didn't know how to. He didn't know how to sit on a chip shot. He didn't, and 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 you could see it. You could see it coming, and you just it was like a train wreck in slow motion. Hmm. You couldn't look away. And, oh God. <laughs> yeah, because you know when you're. He when was just spewing chips. He was yeah. playing like every single hand, and it was a young kid. And he was like 22, 23 years old. Just didn't know when to turn off the. Oh yeah, it's like, turn off the heat. Yeah, he probably he was uh, the table broke and he's probably gone in like two, two levels or so. He was wow. gone. Yeah, it was just. So you know, just because you got a stack of chips doesn't mean you're gonna, you know, make day two. I've right. seen it happen. Yeah. I've so happen. you know, this Broderick guy has got to, you know, really be careful and watch it a little bit here. Uh, you know, and certainly, uh, you know, you have an opportunity to. Uh, Guys are messing with my uh, chargers in the Run Good Gear Lounge, um, but you know you have to be careful when you get the stack. You know that you, you, if you have opportunities to clip some people, do it. But you don't, you know. But you don't need to go out and look for trouble. Exactly. You know that, exactly. and that's where you know we've seen some guys really make some mistakes here at the World Series. Is you know they'll they'll get chips, and we saw it a lot in the uh, in the monster stack. Guys would get chips and then just think, well, I've got chips, and now all of a sudden you start going crazy with it and let it go away. Well, so, especially, hey, especially hey, look, if you're not. Hey, look who's here, by the way. It's Frank Casella and his lovely family. Look at this troop. Oh, yeah? You want to learn how to play poker? So, if he ever goes on to win the main event, you heard it here. So, it starts. Wow. Wow. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, are you gonna are you gonna teach him? I will. Wow. Well. Well, good luck to you, kid. <laughs> that is a good looking family. Nice too. to see you. That is a good looking family. Bye. We were over at Frank's last night. Great party, and oh really? And thanks again, Frank. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Piper, don't forget her too. 
Oh, yeah, his but, wife is gorgeous. Yeah, they're amazing family, wonderful home, and, uh, you know, very hospitable. You know, I, I didn't get really to get to talk about the party last night. Go ahead. The party. What was, about the party last the night, Mark? The party was off the At hook. Frank Casella's. The party was off the hook. Giant, one of those giant uh, rolly ball things in the pool. Oh, wow. Had a lifeguard there pool. for the nice. kids. Nice. That was awesome. We had it. They had, well, no, I'll save that part. Of course, you know, the very nice catered food. Wow. Beverages. That was good. Oh, he, I heard Frank. you won a bracelet recently. Who, me? Frank. Frank. Oh, Frank? Frank. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to set you up here. I'm, yeah, I noticed that. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 apparently, I'm not doing a very good job. I apologize. <laughs> maybe, maybe there might be a person or two out here who may not know who, he, who Frank Casella is. For, of course, World Series of Poker Player of the Year, 2010. Yeah. Very talented player. Yeah. Um, tattoo artist. Really? They had really? a tattoo artist at the party. Really? There were many opportunities for prop bets on that. <laughs> I, I chose not to take them. <laughs> So you 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 done? Do you have a you have a uh, tattoo? I do not have a tattoo. Oh, well, there you you missed your chance. <laughs> no, I you know you can say that I missed my chance, but I I don't feel like it. I feel I'm okay with it. Oh, okay. I'm really okay with it. Okay, I got a tattoo after I uh, after I cashed first time in the World Series. Oh yeah. Yeah. What was it? It's right here. Oh, you you got a spade. Yep. That's darling. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do that stuff sometimes. Have a little fun. Yeah. But me, not so much. I'm not a needle guy. No, uh, no. Uh, you know? Because I know I'd get something stupid. I'd get drunk and get a, <laughs> get, you know, get a tattoo of a, I don't know, maybe a, a snake dragon oh, something like beaver that. mix or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> not a good it, mix. It would be a disaster. Because <laughs> you know me. I'd go big or go home. There you go. You know? I, I'd get a I'd sleeve live. on your first on your first try. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get Blood it. dripping down your arm. Nah. <laughs> Dutch Boyd said last night he wants to get stripes. By the way, he wants to get a stripe for every bracelet he wins. Oh, hey, now there, there's, there's one. There's That's one. not a bad idea. That isn't. I, I think I it's like an that. okay idea. Yeah. Except I'd start up here. I don't think I'd start down there. Dutch is looking good these days. I saw him the other day. He's, he seems to be doing well. He, he was not doing well. I, I played with him. I was a couple years ago at the 2500 stud high and. Dutch was not a happy camper. He was not running well. Yeah. And he was not a happy camper. It's oh. good to see him doing well again. That book, he's got that new book out. And it's a fantastic book, Poker Tilt. I've not read it yet. I'm oh, you got to. I'm telling you, you got to pick it up. I haven't read his, I haven't read his book. I, you know, I haven't read Mattisau's book yet. Really? I have not read it Wow, yet. you're behind. Uh, I'm not much of a reader. You'll like Poker Tilt. I didn't put it down. Honest to God, I read it right through. I never do that because I'm, I'm so busy. I mean, the odds of me having time to read a book the whole way it's just uh, not happening but this time it did i actually saw him and matisau together they were um who was it um oh the chainsaw alan kessler and uh, his buddy um oh, i'm having a brain fart now raymond davis, raymond davis. Yeah. they were sitting down over here by the amazon room and Ke kessler was checking his mail <laughs> he had a stack of mail oh jeez Checking his mail. Yeah, of coupons is yeah, yeah. Is yeah. You coupons. Nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, along comes Dutch Boyd. He wanted his picture taken with uh, Kessler and Raymond Davis. And oh, I'm sorry. That's and, okay. And uh, and uh, and uh, Mattisau's walking by. I yell, Mattisau, Hey, Mattisau, you got to get in on this picture. And the four of them had the, all had their picture. I got a picture of all four of them together. That nice. was an epic picture. I went wow. up on Facebook, of course. Oh, I did see that one. Yeah. 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 yeah so I kind of made that picture happen, and that was just an epic picture of the four, the four poker DJs together. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah, that was fun last night when I walked in, and honest to God, I've got Phil Hel in the middle of the room. It's Helmuth. Jean Robert Balland, oh. Brandon, Brandon Cantu, all, all in the same little circle. Talk about talk about a group oh, there. Oh man, there was a picture for you too. Yeah, that was awesome. I'll bet, I'll, I wish a Zimbabwe video. I bet a video that would have been hilarious. Oh. I just kind of skirted around it. I'm like, I'm not going to try and break that circle. No, that, well, that wasn't uh, a good circle. A video break. of that would have been hilarious. I bet. Oh god. Yeah, but anyway, they they they, they talked for a while down there, and that was. ESPN should have cameras there. Oh God, that was hilarious. Of course, they're all needling <laughs> Kessler. And, oh, of course. And uh, and Mattisau. I mean, and we get and Mattisau was in good form. I mean, of course, he had opinion on everything. And and Kessler, of course, he's got a, an opinion on everything. And oh yeah. And yeah. And 
and Davis, Raymond Davis, he was he was needling both of them, and so <laughs> oh, of course, <laughs> egging, egging everybody on. Raymond, Raymond's just a he's an instigator. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Raymond's yeah, an instigator. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, Mattisau really wasn't. He was in he was in a good mood, so he wasn't really. They couldn't get him on tilt, so that yeah. didn't really <laughs> couldn't really nice. fan the flames there. But Kessler, you know, he's always. <laughs> it's yeah, it's easy to get him there. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, hey, Steve, I got to take a break here. Oh, okay. So uh, we're going to take a commercial break, step back. At some point, we might see Joe Payne over here. That might be good. See how he's doing. I know he's well, got. Yeah, you're, you're always good. I mean, you, you bring out the best in everybody. I mean, you're a great interviewer. Oh, thank you. I mean, you could have a mannequin sitting here and you'd have a great interview. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I do, I do my best, though. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break, and we will be back here on the Mark Hoke Show live from the World Series of Poker as uh, we'll give you more updates on what is happening out here at the main event and a couple of events wrapping up here, too. Still got two other ones going. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. yeah I, I noticed that. So still time to play ball a little bit. So let's step back, and we will take our break. We'll see you on the other side, kids. RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with the promo code HOKE. That's H-O-K-E for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. When it comes to custom poker tables, why would you buy something someone else designed and even named for their sales or marketing purposes? The Nighthawk, the Gambler, the Big Slick, the Nuts. Sure, you can customize it if you want, as long as you choose between black, red, or even green cloth, but that's about it. When you choose to play off-tilt, it's not just another table, it's your table. The same price gets you a fully custom-designed table that reflects your style and game. Off-tilt makes it easy to design a truly one-of-a-kind custom poker table that'll give you home table advantage. Sure, Off Tilt could name their tables for marketing purposes, but why? It's not ours. We don't play on it. And to be honest, there are over a thousand named Off Tilt tables worldwide, including the WSOP, the Deep Stacks Poker Tour, the Jonathan Papelbon, as well as Julie's, Chris's, Scott's, Amber's, Tristan's, just to name a few. So let us add your name to the list and deliver a truly custom-crafted, furniture-quality poker table worthy of your game. Visit www.OffTiltPokerTables.com or call Brian Knott today at 262-490-3812. We'll show you why off tilt is the only way to play sports betters tired of getting beat every week at your sports book it's time to stop guessing and start winning we all know cash is king and it's time to let the team at double digit covers come to the rescue to help you get the positive cash flow you need to live the life you've always dreamed about Tony Dose and his all-star sports handicapping team will be in your corner to help you beat the point spread, bring excitement and winning to your betting experience, and build your bankroll to levels you never thought possible. Get free winning sports information at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Stop guessing and start winning today at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Call now for today's free winner. 1-855-489-2700. That's 1-855-489-2700. At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final Nine comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. 
The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code Mark Hoke Show when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. Poker players, it's time to check out DeejPoker.com. Deej Poker is the unique and clever choice for a new generation of true grinders. Representing the full spectrum of poker players from the novice to the world champion, a true Deej player gives their heart and soul for countless hours at the tables to be the best. And Deej Poker Apparel shows everyone who you really are on and off the felt. So join the new generation at DeejPoker.com. That's D-E-E-G Poker.com. Deej Poker, the world's newest poker apparel store. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, we are back here on the Mark Hoke Show live from the World Series of Poker on MarkHokeShow.com. Don't forget, of course, to join us Wednesdays on KLAV 1230 AM and KLAV 1230AM.com. The talk of Las Vegas. Certainly appreciate you joining us there. Of course, we have the best in poker news and entertainment. All the great guests in the world on the show, and we can prove it. <laughs> Let's go back and take a look at our podcast. And, uh, of course, the all the videos from the World Series up on our YouTube page. Just go on Mark Hoke. That's all you got to do. And you can see all the craziness. Everyone from uh, Gavin Smith and the gang, and Mike Mattiso, I mean, the, Phil Ivey, the list just went on and on and on this year. And we're not done yet. But, of course, this is the part where things get very interesting as we uh, look forward to advancing through the World Series. Should be a, should be a pretty exciting day on monday now, i'm not i'm not going to say i'm turning down to take it sunday and throw it in the garbage can even though i was invited to uh go to a little get together with the with all in magazine which i'm kind of thinking i'd like to take advantage of there's a possibility we may only have one show on sunday not sure yet but monday will be the big day around here as day one c will kick off but we have day one a going on right now one b tomorrow of course starting at noon no other events and we should have one other event probably finishing up. And that is going to be the little one for one drop. I don't think they're definitely not going to get that done tonight. But let's take a look at what is happening there in the little one for one drop. Uh, we have Arpad Balaz out of Otterburn, Germany, trying to get bracelet number six, I believe, for the Germans. 1.45 million, followed by Theodore Driscoll, 1.3. Brandon Eisen, 1.2. Michael... Turinek at 1.15. Uh, <laughs> why do they do this to me? Vladislaw Eckhart at 1.12. Uh, Jackdoof Duong at a little over a million. Then you have Andrew Alexander Ziskin, Keanu Tabali, Maurice Hawkins. And Hawkins, you know, even though he's uh, about you know two to one from the leader, Hawkins continues to chip up. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, if Maurice Hawkins was able to come back and win this event, 
that would just be another name to add to this list of first-time bracelet winners that have just battled and scratched and clawed to finally win World Series of Poker bracelets this year. And uh, Reese Hawkins hanging in there right now, 780. Uh, Matthew Lapasse in there, too. Uh, Eric Baldwin, Base Baldy, is at 16th at the moment. Uh, Brett Schaefer uh, on the short stack at 125. So, according to this, 25 players remaining in the little one-for-one one drop. So, they'll play that down to a final table, and they're going to wrap it up tomorrow. So, those guys are going to be stuck playing 1C, but I'm sure they're quite fine with that by getting to this final table. Of course, that prize pool, yeah, pretty significant, over $4 million in that prize pool. Winners walk in with 637539 bucks to win that little one-for-one one drop. So that's a, you know, not a bad little total right there. Uh, event 63, of course, is finished. We have event number 64. That is the Pot Limit Omaha Tournament. Uh, the 10K, that one is on a final table, or is at 9 at this point. And let's take a look at the chip counts on that one. Uh, Pat Walsh has taken a little bit of a hit. He was uh, up over 4 million chips, down to 3.78. Uh, so Pat Walsh, 3.78 million, still leading the tournament. By a nice chunk uh, over Miltiadis Kurakaitis from Nicosia, Cyprus, 2.48. Uh, Javed Abrams has now made a, nice, made a nice jump and has closed it to 2.1. And then everybody else under a million chips, Isaac Barron, Marco Newman, uh, Mikhail Schlaber, Mike Mikhail Mariska, uh, Matt Marafiotti, Jonas Entine, all hanging on to try and uh, bring home this World Series of Poker bracelet. But right now, Pat Walsh is your chip leader in event number 64. Let's go to event 65. Of course, it's soon not going to be called event 65 to us anymore as we're doing these recaps because we are very close to the main event being the only game in town. And once again, the aforementioned John Broderick listed at 140,075 chips. Broderick is your leader. Nick DeVella, at the moment at least, 140,000. Nick DeVella has 93,000. Uh, Raymond Ezie, 89. Louis Cohen, 85. Chad Power, 84. Aaron Will at 70. Shang Dai, 68. Ethiel Garcia, 67. Alexander Rausch, 67. Uh, Sebastian Langrock at 67. Uh, Matt Ashton's got a few chips to start things off here, too. He's at 64. That would be dangerous to see him get a few chips early in this thing. But, of course, so we all know how that works. It, it, you know, how many of these guys that are chip leaders on day one actually are able to sustain it is very, very few. And a lot of times these guys that are up at the top of the board, uh, generally amateur-type players, uh, that just managed to get on a roll. Very few guys are significantly uh, skilled enough to hang on to that lead. You know, we saw uh, we saw that happen last year. I believe our day one or day two leader had a pretty huge chip stack and just ran it down, and it was pretty ugly. Uh, so we'll see what happens with uh, guys like John Broderick, who are trying to uh, you know make a name for themselves and you know, make a run at the world championship, get to that final table to come back in November, so it should be pretty exciting stuff as we get to the afternoon. Uh, let's just see if we do any more updates coming in on this. And we are looking at... <laughs> All right, let's get the players on dare break. Um, some of the counts, uh, Salman Babani at 48, Barney Boatman 27-7, David Van Plu. 25-2, Josh Prager, 19-9, Jeff Gross at 14-8, so Jeff Gross struggling in there a little bit, as is Andrew Lichtenberger. Of course, one of the big news, one of, the, one of our bigger names is gone. Jason Mercier has been eliminated a little while ago in this tournament. He is out, loses the rest of his chips to Alex Simic, and Mercier just did not have it going today, and he is out. Uh, Martin Jacobson is at 58. Uh, we also have Kevin Allen is out of this World Series. Allen uh, losing his last 19-2 on uh, the last hand. Uh, had ace-king against tens and did not get it done. Uh, Max Aldergott's got him stealth together. Chad Power picking up some more chips. 
Uh, Dario Sammartino had a little bit of trouble here. He's down to 15-3. So, of course, uh, once again, these guys are on dinner break right now. Uh, they got 56 minutes, so plenty of time for those guys to take it easy and relax a little bit. Of course, you know, the stress of getting in there in the main event, you know, for a lot of these, maybe many of these players, their first time out. Well, you get to the dinner break and get to take the tension off a little bit and relax. No, I don't advocate drinking, but in that spot, if it was my first time, I I think I wouldn't mind having one drink just to, just to relax a little bit. So that's where that is right now. Uh, we were talking about the World Series of Poker Player of the Year standings um, before the Fox came over, the other Fox. Uh, Brandon Shaq Harris, of course, leading the way, seven point, 752 points. George Danzer, 745.2. Third is the Poker Players Champion winner, John Hennigan at 557.88. Very good World Series for him. Daniel Negreanu, uh, thanks to his runner of finishing the one drop, and uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of controversy about that. Uh, but Daniel goes to 519.08 points. Daniel Coleman, the winner of the one drop, moves to 452. Justin Bonomo at 449, followed by Richard Ashby at 413. Brock Parker, 406. Calvin Anderson, 398. J.C. Tran, 374. Uh, Will Givens on the big board in 11th. He is at 367. Bryn Kenny, 351. Jesse Martin now at 350.5. Todd Brunson with his runner of finish last night or two nights ago goes to 345.03. Corey Kilpatrick bracelet winner at 340, 343. Dan Kelly is at 337. Phil Helmuth is uh, in shouting distance a little bit here at 330, followed by Pierre Milan, 326. Millionaire maker Jonathan Dimmig at 323. And Zach Grunberg at 319. Um, some other notables on the board. Uh, Alex Bilicor at 316. Joe Cotta, 315. Josh Arie, 312. Uh, Davidi Suriano, 312. Chris Wallace at 309. Vanessa Selps, 308. Dutch Boyd, 307.75. Ismail Bojang, 304. He's been nickel and diamond it, but uh, making a lot of deep runs. Kyle Cartwright at 300, as is Brian Yoon. So those are your top 30. Now, uh, of course, you know we do have the WSOP Asia Pacific coming up so there's 10 bracelets coming up for that one and of course this main event bracelet uh we don't really see anybody that is involved in those uh player of the year races left in the last two events low one for one drop in the 10k plo uh but one thing to keep in mind here is what did it did you do enough to keep yourself within shouting distance for if you can get to the uh, main event final table here is a if you haven't looked at this lately, here's your WSOP main event player of the year points that you score. Now, normally there's a bunch of multipliers for these, and these will come into play uh, in Asia Pacific. But one thing to keep in mind for the main event is obviously you can make a huge jump by winning or you know, getting in the top three, top three, four or so will get it done. Uh, but the bottom 50% gets 25 points your next 30 percent gets 50 points the remaining top 20 gets 75 and then when you get to the final table ninth place picks up 100 seventh eighth place is 120 seventh place is 140 sixth is 165 fifth is 190 fourth gets 220 third gets 250 second gets 350 and winning the main event will get you 500 points so just going by where we are right now minus the asia pacific bracelets quite a few players still in striking distance if they can win um and if you're looking at maybe go back and take a look at the top three so two top three third gets you 250 so to be within brandon shack harris and george danzer range which kind of kind of try and pull the upset on that uh you really got to be around uh what 510 points which isn't very many guys hennigan and negranu are the only ones within range with a top three finish uh you have a top four finish or a second place finish which is 350 points that is going to pull in coleman bonimo ashby and brock parker uh, would not be enough for Calvin Anderson. So a runner-up finish on those. And, of course, once again, we're not counting in Asia Pacific, but 
That's what would do. Well, that would work. Now, 500 points then brings in anybody from 250, 252.1 on in. So you slide down, and uh, that list gets pretty extensive. So those top 30 we mentioned, plus you're also getting all the way down into uh, really your top 50 players. Scott Clements on up. Uh, so you're, anybody in your top 50 could conceivably catch up. But, of course, there are still a few bracelets to be given away at Asia Pacific. So uh, no no wrap for that. And we'll have a better idea about the player of the year race once Asia Pacific wraps up later this year before we head out to uh, come back here for the main for the November 9 in, well, the beginning of November. So pretty interesting player of the year race. But right now, of course, the Shaq Harris and George Danzer fight is the primary battle that everybody should be watching. But uh, can John Hennigan, Daniel Negreanu, possibly make a deep run and get into this thing? Of course, Negreanu, player of the year or last year, and you know, what a bracelet over in Asia Pacific could be critical to catching up to these guys. But, of course, so we'll know a little bit better in about uh, about a week. Once we see who makes a nice deep run into the World Series, because obviously you're not going to get a lot of points if you don't get to the final table on this. So it should be pretty exciting. We'll see where that uh, player of the year race ends up here at the World Series of Poker. Uh, still at 49 minutes left on the player's break here at the main event. Uh, day 1A underway. And we're going to step back, take one more break, and when we come back, we'll continue to give you any updates, see who's flying around here at the World Series of Poker and say hi. Uh, but once again, a little bit of a slow day out here. Well, we shall see what's going on. So let's take our last commercial break, and we'll be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show. Thanks for joining us live from the World Series of Poker. We'll see you on the other side of the break. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code MarkHokeShow when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold, hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit blindsquirrelapparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. I'm Dutch Boyd, two-time WSOP bracelet winner, and I want to share my story with you. Twelve years as a pro has taught me a lot, but the last year, I've boiled it all down into a tell-all book, 90,000 words. In Poker Tilt, I take you on my journey through all the ups and downs that poker has to offer, all the manic highs and hellish lows of every bad beat and lucky draw. So go to www.pokertilt.com to read more, or just go buy the new book on Amazon or Kindle. Right now, pokertilt.com. I guarantee you'll enjoy the ride. 
poker players, it's time to check out DeejPoker.com. Deej Poker is the unique and clever choice for a new generation of true grinders. Representing the full spectrum of poker players from the novice to the world champion, a true Deej player gives their heart and soul for countless hours at the tables to be the best. And Deej Poker Apparel shows everyone who you really are on and off the felt. So join the new generation at DeejPoker.com. That's D-E-E-G Poker.com. Deej Poker, the world's newest poker apparel store. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with a promo code HOKE. That's H-O-K-E for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And we are back live here at the World Series of Poker Getting Ready to wrap up the show. we got about 17 minutes to go. Hey, we do have our lines open if you want to give us a call at 702-997-3015. That's right, just look right up there. Right up there, there we go. See yeah. Call 702-997-3015. Give us a ring or you hit us on Skype at MarkHope5150. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any thoughts about what's been going on at the World Series, what's happening today or throughout the past six weeks as we continue to roll it on here at the WSOP. And earlier today, we were taking a look back at what was has happened here at the World Series so far. And uh, we want to continue that while we have a little bit of time. Uh, Doug Polk, of course, uh, we were stopped at Event 23, and Doug Polk, who had uh, just had a deep run earlier, comes back and uh, wins Event 23, the Turbo No Limit Hold'em, holding off Andy Filichak, uh, Jonathan Hammer in third, Chad Cox in fourth, Liam Alcock in fifth. We have Tony Gregg finishing sixth, uh, Dash Dudley in eighth, and Amanda Baker manages to get a 10th place finish out of that one. So a nice run there for Amanda Baker. Uh, event number 24, the No Limit Hold'em six-handed event. 5K buy-in, and that went to Kevin Eister. And uh, Eister, uh, one, once again, we, we had an earlier theme of players winning their first bracelet have been grinding for a while. Kevin Eister, young player, you know, has been working out pretty hard to get there and gets the job done as he holds off Pierre Neuville out of Belgium uh, to win $622,000 and event 24, Lucky Chewy finishing third. That uh, has turned out to be his deepest run here at the World Series. Bryn Kenny, <laughs> and we saw his name on a couple of final tables, but 
We really saw one later on. Uh, Kenny finishing fourth. Uh, some other ones, uh, Matt Jarvis finishing ninth, Brian, Byron Kaverman in 10th, Amanda Musumeci in 12th, Greg Merson 13th. So Merson had a couple deep runs in the World Series as he preps himself for that uh, main event that he is playing right now. Corey Kilpatrick finishing 17th, Will Givens in 19th, and Big Hooney finishing in 20th. Uh, we take a look at back at event number 25, the Omaha seven-card stud high-low split eight or better event and that one went to John Kabaj out of Bushy, the United Kingdom. So John Kabaj taking down a bracelet. Uh, Thunder Thomas, Thomas Thunder Keller, uh, Chandler, Arizona, finishing second, nearly pulled off another bracelet, but could not quite finish the job. Uh, Christopher McHugh in third. Uh, some big names also on that on that pile is Joe Tehan in fifth, Eric Seidel in sixth, uh, Mike Leah seventh, Tom Schneider in eighth, Robert Mizraki in thirteenth. Alan Jaffrey, Schulman in 14th, Konstantin Puchkov, 16th, Matt Glantz, 18th, Mike Matisau, 19th. And, of course, uh, that one was one known for the big blow-up uh, that Mike had the massive controversy here at the World Series of Poker. Uh, that was event 25. And it's amazing how, you know, you're going to hear some names getting repeated here a lot uh, for guys that were... You know, reaching final tables, running deep, and then managed to come up big later in the series and get the job done. Uh, well, $1,500 buy-in, event 26, no limit hold'em. Uh, Andrew Rennick takes down that bracelet, defeating Michael Katz. Tony Gargano finishing third, Ryan Welch in fourth. Uh, Reed Goodmiller rounding out your top five. Uh, Dan Smith finishing ninth. Jonas Wexler in tenth. Will Fiella in eleventh. That was Will's deepest run here at the World Series of Poker. Nick Schulman in fourteenth. And Dash Dudley on the board again. So Dash Dudley had managed to pull out a few events here. We go to event number 27. As we had a horse tournament going on there. And, of course, uh, just taking a look here real quick. 39 minutes left on the player's 90-minute dinner break. $1,500 buy-in on the horse. And, of course, won by Tommy Hang. And, uh, once again, another longtime grinder, well-known in the poker community. He comes up and knocks off Jim Colopy. had won a bracelet over in Asia last year, uh, winning. But Tommy Hang gets it done and uh, takes the bracelet home. And we saw a picture earlier today where he had his baby playing with the bracelet. It's like he's trying to give her a feel of it or something there. Uh, Kristen Lord in third. Brandon Gus in fourth. Joe Viella in fifth. Uh, David O.D.B. Baker. Finishing 8th, uh, Dutch Boyd, a nice run for him there, finishing 11th. As you can hear, there's a theme going on. John Turner in 13th, John Manette in 16th. That was event number 27, the $1,500 horse. Uh, we'll slide it to event number 28, Pot Limit Hold'em event. Wasn't one of the more successful events here at the World Series. But, uh, well, actually, there's another one. This is the 10K buy-in, 160 entries. Won by Alex Bigelacore, one of the top players, top-ranked players, according to the Global Poker Index, over in uh, in Europe. And Bigelacore holds off Matt O'Donnell and actually made a big comeback on O'Donnell to take that bracelet down. Bigelacore winning another World Series bracelet. Chino Reem finishing fourth on that one. Todd Brunson, or Ismail Bojang in fifth. Todd Brunson in sixth. So Todd Brunson with two top six finishes at this World Series. Uh, Barney Boatman finishing ninth, Dan Shack 10th, uh, Eric Seidel in 11th, Scott Seaver in 12th, John Jawanda, John Jawanda, or excuse me, Alberto Brennis in 14th, John Jawanda in 15th on that one. We go to event number 29, No Limit Hold'em. $2,500 buy-in, and that goes to Pierre Milan, Pierre Milan and knocking off Justin Oliver in a great heads-up match for our good buddy Justin Oliver coming up one spot short. Uh, Matt Salzberg with his best run of the World Series finishing third. Uh, Thad McNulty in fourth, Barry Hutter in fifth. Uh, David Benefield finishing tenth in that one. Uh, who else do we have? Rep Porter in 18th. Uh, Isaac Barron in 21st. So that was event number 29 and a great one there. No limit hold'em. Seven card stud, high, low, eight or better event. Number 30 is so we're getting close to the halfway point here. And a name you heard earlier, Calvin Anderson winning uh, out of Yukon, Oklahoma, wins his first World Series of Poker bracelet. 
and Joe Tehan comes up short. And Joe, uh, of course, does Joe does have a bracelet, but uh, Joe has made so many deep runs uh, since then, and it's been very difficult for him to try and get that second one. Uh, Tehan finishing second, Eric Kurtzman in third, uh, Levon Torreson in fourth, the Melissa Burr, who has just been outstanding in this World Series, finishing fifth. Uh, let's see, Jimmy Fricky in seventh, so nice run for Jimmy. Ted Forrest in ninth in that one, and Jesse Martin in 19th, David Levy in 20th. In event 30, the seven-card stud, high, low, eight, or better. We'll swing it down event 31. No limit, hold them. Being played on that one. $1,500 buy-in, and that one goes to Brett Schaefer, and Brett has just been tearing it up this World Series, too. Uh, a great uh, series for him. He knocks off Ronald Sullivan and also Matt Stout coming close again, but no cigar for Matt as he finishes third. Peter Gould in fourth, Alexander Goffman in fifth, and we've got Kyle Weir 13th. And those are kind of your notables there. Perry Freeman coming out in 28th in event number 31. No Limit Hold'em event. Event number 32. No Limit Hold'em six-handed. And this was a pretty good one. As Joe Cotta. How about this? I mean, an amazing group of players here at the end of this one. 10K buy-in on this. And the former World Series of Poker main event champion becomes the first bracelet winner since Carlos Mortensen to win a, to win a bracelet after he won the main event. Mortensen last did it in 2000. 2003 and Joe Cotta finally breaks that streak and brings home $670,000 for the victory as he knocks off Jeremy Osmus to hold on to that World Series bracelet. Max Silver finishing third, J.C. Tran in fourth, Eric Lindgren in fifth and Dario Sammartino in sixth, George Danzer hitting number nine on that one. So nice run there by uh, George Danzer as all those points are starting to stack up for the World Series Player of the Year. Uh, event 33, no limit hold them on that one. $1,000 buy-in, and of course, that one won by the author of the new poker book, Poker Tilt, Dutch Boy, comes up with bracelet number three, wins $288,000 uh, as he knocks off Steve Norton to win that bracelet, Paul Cogliano in third, and Will Givens in fourth, and uh, we all knew that Will was a pretty darn scary player at that table. And we heard from Will later in this World Series as well. I mean, it's been incredible. Uh, Vinny Pahuja took a rough beat to get knocked off of this table in seventh place. That was another scary one, along with Gabriel Nassif finishing in eighth. Faraz Jaka, 11th in that one. But Dutch Boyd captures bracelet number three in event 33. No limit hold him. That's a pretty easy one to remember. Uh, event 34, we have a seven-card stud tournament going on. And we'll pull that one up for you. $1,500 buy-in goes to Eric Buckman. So Buckman picking up a, a great bracelet as he knocks off Alex, Alex Karpchenko and Alexander Denisov. This was a very interesting one. We saw, we saw the classic USA versus Russia battle going on here. Uh, Thompson finishing fourth and Bryn Kenny finishing fifth. <laughs> it's amazing how this turned out. Uh, Daniel Negreanu finishing 10th in that event. But uh, Eric Buckman, very popular victory there in the seven card stud uh, event number 35 no limit hold them eight handed event they dropped the four this year but kept the eight 5k buy-in goes to brian yoon so yoon winning another world series bracelet and holds off josh aria and uh, you know josh has josh has had an outstanding world series here too uh, but brian yoon manages to stop him again from winning a bracelet josh bergman in third arctic uh Kashumi in fourth, Mustafa Kanit in fifth, Dan Smith finishing sixth, and Tony Cuisineau, uh, once again, uh, another big cash, but another missed opportunity to win a bracelet as Cuisineau finishes eighth in that one. Trickett in 11th, Sam Stein in 14th, Sylvain Loosely, last, November 9th from last year, finishing in 16th place. All right, so uh, we'll stop there on our recap. So once again, that takes us through event 35. And as we go through the next couple of days, we'll continue to break down all the winners here at the World Series of Poker. It has been just a year of redemption and excitement for a lot of guys picking up their first World Series of Poker bracelets who were pushing and pushing this year and finally came through. 
but a pretty uh, pretty wild World Series here, to say the least. Uh, once again, we want to remind everybody uh, a couple of uh, housekeeping issues. Don't forget, of course, again about the Summer Showdown in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, coming up on July 24th through August 3rd. We'd love to see you up there at Calgary at the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. We're going to be hanging around up there, 500K guarantee on the main event, so make sure you check that out. Go to CanadianPokerTour.tv. Matt Stout's Charity Series of Poker, uh, that is tomorrow at 5 p.m., 260 plus 40 buy-in with uh, $100 rebuys and add-ons uh, over at Planet Hollywood all-star cast of players so if you're not playing tomorrow get over there and help man out of course everything benefiting benefiting the three square food bank las vegas's only food bank so please join us for that uh don't forget to join us on uh, klav 12 30 a.m the talk of las vegas also if you're not a local that's okay klav 12 30 am.com how about that so uh tune us in wednesdays at 3 p.m pacific time on the mark hoke show and of course uh, internet shows going out on mark show.com all right, and uh, I think we're we're in pretty good shape. Uh, still, players have 30 minutes to come back from that dinner break, so uh, you know, we're starting to see a little activity here in the hallway. But it, uh, I think we do have one of the other tournaments getting back into play. I believe that they were playing the uh, little one for one drop, uh, wrapping up in there. So we'll see what happens here tonight. Uh, we should have a, at least one more bracelet given out, and then one more tomorrow before we are full for, full speed ahead on the main event here at the WSOP. So that's going to do it, guys. We will see you tomorrow. And the possibility I made to take up an invite here. You know, I got a chance to go over to the uh, All In Part Magazine Party. So I think I uh, may go partake on that one. And uh, so, like I said, that, I think that's going to do it. So we will see you guys tomorrow here on the Mark Oak Show. If not at 1, we'll definitely be here at 6.30 or maybe a little later. We'll get it figured out, but for sure, 6.30. So we will see you tomorrow here on the Mark Hoke Show live from the World Series of Poker. It'll be day 1B for the main event and also one more bracelet to get given away. So we'll catch you tomorrow with all the updated news and notes from the World Series of Poker live at the Rio. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Once again, follow us on Twitter, Mark Hoke Show, and, of course, Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show, and check out markhokeshow.com. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night, everyone.